What is that damage? 200,000? <laughs> yeah, boy. Thank God it's physical damage and not meltable. Yo, guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. And today we are taking a closer look at Eula's skills, doing a breakdown. We're going to be talking about what her potential builds might look like. We're going to show you some really quick math that I did to show you her potential damage output. And we're also just going to theory craft and take a look at maybe what weapons are going to be good for her as well. I am I'm very excited for this character. I think her design is super awesome, so that's primarily why I'm doing this video. And I plan to do a similar video for Yan Fei as well. So if you're interested in that, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. And so with all that said, let's just talk about her potential builds. So I could think of three potential builds that we could build. And this is kind of like Rosaria, a cryo infusion comp using Chong Yun as your infuser. And then she would also be using the four piece Blizzard Strayer set so that she gets that 15% extra extra cryo damage and tons and tons of extra crit rate and then you would obviously just build her for tons and tons of crit damage slap on a crit damage circlet try to get as many crit damage subsets as possible and maybe even use a black cliff slasher for that extra 55 percent extra crit damage she also has crit damage as her ascension stat and at level 80 you're getting 28.8 percent extra crit damage and then if you want to bring her up to Ascension Phase 6, she's going to get about another 10%, which brings it up to 38.4% extra crit damage. So yeah, her Ascension Phase passive is pretty strong on the crit damage side. And then the next build is potentially a full physical carry in order to enhance her elemental burst damage as much as possible. So with this build, you would use the new artifact set that's coming with 1.5, the Pale Flame set. The four piece set will give you 25% extra physical damage and then an extra 25% physical damage once you get two stacks. And you get stacks by using your elemental skill within seven seconds of each other. And with the cooldown on her her e skill this artifact set is basically made exactly for her and i mean even the aesthetic of this artifact set perfectly matches eula so this is definitely her de facto artifact set like canonically probably <laughs> And I also forgot to mention that you get a 9% extra attack bonus for each stack that you get, up to a maximum of 2. So 18%, which is pretty much the same as the Gladiator set. And then lastly, you would use a physical damage goblet to round out this full physical carry set. Her next artifact set is a mixed physical and cryo build. And so with this, we have some options. We can go with the 4-piece Pale Flame, but instead of a physical goblet, we would go with a cryo goblet. Or you can go 2-piece Blizzard with 2-piece Blood or two-piece blizzard with two-piece pale flame and then go with either cryo goblet or physical goblet depending on which portion of her kit you really want to boost and then at the end of the day her best teammate is going to be Zhang Li because he can shred both physical damage and cryo damage I think any character out there that is using split damage between physical and elemental Zhang Li is going to be your go-to support character because he can easily shred both of those. Now, if we want to run Eula as a sub DPS or a burst support DPS, it might not work so well just because of the way that her skills work. You want to get stacks on her Grimheart skill, which has a four second cooldown. So that doesn't seem to lend too well for a burst DPS or a sub DPS because it's clearly designed to have Eula stay on the field with such a short cooldown time on it. However, on the other hand, the Grimheart does last for 18 seconds, so you definitely can play her as a sub DPS, but if you forget to switch into her every 4 seconds for the press version of her E skill, then you're losing out on a lot of her potential damage. But at the end of the day, as long as you're switching into her before your stacks of Grimheart disappear, then it's doable. There is, however, one exception to this, and that's if you use the Sacrificial Greatsword on Eula. But we'll talk more about Sacrificial official greatsword later on. So those are her potential artifact builds. So now let's get into her skills and the talent scalings. And then after that, take a look at some of the calculations that I did for her potential damage output. So taking a look at her E skill, this has pretty good scaling on it. The press damage does 234% at level 8 and the hold damage does 392. So pretty strong and there's lots of good melt potential there. When she releases, we'll have to see what the internal cooldown timer of her E skill is going to be because the Ice World brand damage can potentially be melted multiple times. 
on a single pyro application. If it is possible, then yeah, her melt potential is going to be super strong. And with that said, the ice brand damage has 153% scaling at level 8, which is pretty decent. And when you use the hold version of her E skill, if you have two stacks of Grimheart, then there will be two Ice World brands potentially based off of the wording on this skill. So this actually ends up being 300% scaling at level 8. So in total, this is about 700% scaling for her hold damage when you have two stacks of Grimheart. And then for some reason, they also decided to give her defense bonus 30% per stack. 30% is kind of a lot. Two stacks gives you 60% defense. So not only is she kind of strong, but she's also pretty tanky. And then moving down, not not only does this have lots of damage, but it also gives a res percent decrease to both physical damage and cryo damage. It lasts 7 seconds, which is not super long, but it's enough because her cooldowns are only 4 seconds. So this is probably what her practical full combo is going to look like if you don't use an elemental burst. You start off with the E skill, and then you go into your normal attacks, probably 1 or 2 rotations. Since she's a claymore, she's probably going to have slightly slower attack speed so I'm envisioning probably one full rotation of her attack combo and then you'll be ready to unleash your next E skill. So E skill, normal attack combo, E skill, normal attack combo, and then hold E skill. That's what her full rotation is probably going to look like. And so that's going to take maybe around 8 to 9 seconds in order to complete that full combo, just based off of the cooldowns with this data mine information. But maybe we can just call it 10 seconds to be on the safe side, but still, it's pretty quick in my opinion. But that's of course just the full potential of her E skill. You don't have to have two stacks of Grimheart in order to use the hold version of her E. Who knows, when she releases, it might actually be better to have one if we end up being able to mount both of the hold damage and just one Ice World brand. So again, you know, we'll just have to see, but that's where the potential in this character lies. Next, let's take a look at her ultimate skill, or more commonly known as her elemental burst, the glacial illumination. And I may have just lied about her E skill being the potential for this character, because with this skill, things can get kind of crazy and kind of funny at the same time. This is a mix between cryo damage and physical damage. So a lot of people do get turned off because they see physical, and physical does not really have that great of a rap because you can't enhance this damage like you can melt damage for example. So it's limited in that sense. And there's a good reason why they made this physical, because the scaling on this is absolutely nuts. If it was cryo or if it was mountable, she would literally just one-shot everything in the game. Okay, so let me just read the description for this skill real quick. She brandishes her greatsword, dealing cryo damage to nearby opponents, and creates a lightfall sword that follows her around for a certain duration. When Eula's own normal attacks, elemental skills, and elemental bursts deal damage to opponents, they will charge the lightfall sword, which can gain an energy stat every 0.1 seconds. Once its duration ends, the Lightfall Sword will explode, dealing physical damage to nearby opponents. This damage scales on the number of energy stacks the Lightfall Sword has accumulated. If she dies or leaves the field, the Lightfall Sword will immediately explode. So first, let's take a look at the percent scaling for this at level 8. At level 8, the cryo damage percent scaling is 328, which is pretty average for an elemental burst, I would say. It's lower than it's lower than Hu Tao's elemental burst. It's comparable to Deluxe elemental burst. It's lower than Child's. So maybe it's actually a little bit lower than average than other 5 stars. And obviously it's going to be meltable, so lots of potential damage there. And then the Lightfall Sword damage. This is where things get pretty ridiculous. So the base damage percent scaling is 600, which is one of the highest out of all of the characters, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to go and double check Child and Hu Tao really quick. So it turns out that it's slightly below Child's ranged elemental burst but much lower than his melee. Child's melee at level 8 is 742 scaling, which is kind of pretty ridiculous now that I think about it. I never realized it was that high. And then Hu Tao's at level 8 for her low HP skill damage is 558, so it's actually higher there. But obviously, again, this is physical damage, so it can neither be vaporized or melted, unlike Tartaglia and Hu Tao. But that's why it can accumulate energy, and it will increase the damage 
per stack by 110%. Per stack, this is. So the question that remains is how long that Lightfall Sword is going to hang around Eula, because that's ultimately going to determine how many stacks that we can get. The max amount of stacks that we can get is 30. So if we can reach 30, then that's the full potential damage of this elemental burst. And so this is probably the reason why they gave her double hits in her combos, because each of those hits is going to give you a stack. Because notice that the description says deal damage, so each of those double hits is going to deal damage and then give you a stack. That's probably the design principle that they are going for there. It is a little bit weird that they are saying elemental burst as well, because I don't think you can cast another elemental burst while this one's active, so I don't see how you can get more stacks from casting another elemental burst here. I don't know why they decided to do that. Maybe they'll change the wording when she finally comes out, maybe not. And then when it comes to her elemental skill, if you have two Grimheart stacks, then you're getting more stacks for her elemental burst. You want to proc instances of damage as much as you can while this Lightfall Sword is following you around so that you can get as many stacks as possible. So let's just kind of be conservative, right, and say maybe we can get 15 stacks. Because I'm pretty sure her Constellation 6 is what really unlocks the full power of this Elemental Burst. Her C6 gives her a 50% chance to grant the Lightfall Sword an additional stack, so I'm going to assume that 15 is probably what we can reach for people that don't hit C6. So with 15 stacks, that means our percent scaling goes up to past a thousand percent. Yeah, so it's pretty ridiculous. But again, right, physical damage only, so you can't melt it, you can't vaporize it, there's no elemental reactions that you can deal with this skill. So the only way we can buff this attack's damage is from res debuffs and physical damage buffs. So that's going to come from a C4 Shinyan, which gives 15% extra physical damage and 15% physical debuff res on enemies. Zhongli, which is going to give you 20% shred on your enemies. The artifact set, which gives you 50% extra physical damage once you hit two stacks. A physical goblet, which is going to give you 46%. Super conduct, which is going to give you another 40%. And that's all that I can think of on how to increase the potential damage of this elemental burst. Although it's not quite elemental because it's physical. Anyway, I did not look into Bennett or Pyro Resonance because that's just attack boost. I'm specifically looking for sources of res and damage boost directly to physical damage since that's harder to come by than attack percent. Attack percent is pretty universal and when it comes to calculations all I have to do is just increase her attack power. So let's take a look at some of those numbers right now. Alright, so first let's just take a look at the table and then shortly after that, we'll take a look at the graphs. So obviously, the Omega full physical build is going to have higher physical damage. Her normal attacks and her Lightfall damage is significantly more than her mixed set. Included in this table is also the percent difference between the two damages. And then obviously, her mixed set with a Pyro Goblet what? has stronger cryo damage. So when it comes to physical damage, the Omega full physical set does about 20% more. And then when it comes to the mix set, its cryo damage is about 30.5% more. But now let's take a look at it from a holistic point of view so that we can see what the total damage output for these different builds is gonna be like. This first graph just has every single source of damage, including crit damage. For her elemental burst and lightfall damage, I included a single stack and when we have 15. I didn't include when we have 30 because it's just way too much and it just overinflates the graph. So let's cut it down just a little bit and take a look at just the crit damage because ultimately the crit damage is really what we want to shoot for. So if we take a look at that, we can see that the Omega full physical does do more damage than the mixed set. And it's pretty obvious that the full physical build is going to deal more damage because the scaling on her elemental burst is so insane. But this is an elemental burst, so coupled with energy recharge problems and the cooldown, which is 20 seconds for her, this is not an attack that you'll be using very often. And so let's take a look at her damage when we don't include the lightfall damage. But really quickly, before we do that, let me just show you a chart that compares pairs both of the lightfall damage when we have 30 stacks just for kicks. 
feel mega full physical damage can deal up to 203,000 damage with the light fall if you have 30 stacks. And for the mix set, you're going to be dealing about 164,000, which, remember the percentages, that's about a 20% difference. But again, this is at 30 stacks, and I'm pretty sure at C0, you won't be able to hit 30. All right, now let's move on to the chart when we don't include the lightfall damage. And you can see here that it does change. The mixed set beats the Omega full physical set. This is because for the mixed set, I am including the E-Skill hold melt damage. And that melt damage on the hold version of her E-Skill can be pretty strong. And the thing that you have to understand with this chart is that this is only one rotation of her normal attack combo and only one instance of her E-Skill and one instance of her hold E-Skill. Remember that her full combo is probably going to look like one E-Skill into a full combo, into another E-Skill, into another full combo, into the hold version of her E-Skill. So if you think about it in that way, it could be possible that her physical normal attack damage for the Omega full physical set can outperform the mixed set because your normal attacks are just so much stronger. The same picture happens when we look at just the crit damage, so there's not much to do here except it's more of a condensed and easier to look at version of what we just saw. And then the last graph that I want to show you guys is just every single part of her kit and a comparison between the two artifact sets so you can see which ones deal more damage depending on the artifact set. Feel free to pause the video and study the table if you'd like. And so okay, I decided to just go ahead and make that chart where we do two normal attack combos and two press E skills. And the result is this chart. It actually turns out that both sets perform nearly identical to each other. The mix set does slightly more damage, but just slightly. You can see the total damage at the top of those bars there. So it seems that the boost in the cryo damage is able to surpass the damage of that of the physical damage even when we do two full combos of her normal attack. And so that means the tiebreaker for which set is going to be the best is going to be the damage of her elemental burst. And the Omega full physical build is the set that does more physical damage when it comes to her elemental burst. So it does turn out that the Omega full physical build might be the way to go for Eula. What's ultimately going to be the deciding factor on whether to go full physical or whether to go with a mixed set is going to depend on how many stacks we can get for elemental burst and how easy it is to actually apply all of that physical res debuff and physical damage bonus for her. Remember that in these calculations I used a C4 Shinyan and Superconduct in order to increase the physical damage as much as possible. A lot of people out there do not have C4 Shinyan and keeping 100% uptime on Superconduct might be difficult. And if you happen to mistime your Superconduct where your elemental burst doesn't get the benefit from it, then that's a lot of huge damage loss. As for the mixed set, it might actually be easier for Eula to cause melt reactions because her normal attacks aren't infused with cryo. So it's actually going to be easier to time the melt if you have someone like Shangling or again Shinyan that can apply pyro constantly while they're off the field. These are obviously just a couple of examples and I'm sure that you guys can think of different kinds of team comps and different kinds of scenarios where we can potentially melt her damage more reliably. If you're free to play or if you're not super wailing, you don't plan to roll for her signature weapon, then you're probably thinking which four star weapons are probably going to be best for her. Or maybe if you have a wolf's gravestone, if you do have that, then just use it. Like, I, I don't even need to say that, do I? If you have a five star weapon, just use it. But when it comes to four star weapons, you kind of have a choice there. So what should we go with? I think she has three really good candidates, and that's going to be the Serpent Spine from the Battle Pass, the Black Cliff Slasher, which is the shop weapon. Sacrificial Greatsword has potential and I really want to try it out to just see how it's going to work. And maybe the prototype Archaic if you really have nothing else. So now I want to talk about the Sacrificial Greatsword for Eula. 
because I think that there is a lot of hidden potential with this weapon. So the Sacrificial Greatsword at level 90 has 565 base attack, which is the highest for 4 stars, for most 4 stars that are currently in the game at least. And at R1, you have a 40% chance to end your cooldown if you hit someone with your elemental skill, and that can only occur every 30 seconds. So at R1, it doesn't sound very good, but if you have more refinement up to maybe 3, 4, or 5, where it goes up to 60%, 70%, or 80%, and the cooldown goes down to 22, 19, and 16, you're going to be able to pull off her E-Skill combo if you get the ability to proc. So let me explain and try to imagine this. You use her E skill and you get it to proc. That means you immediately get to use it again, giving you two instant stacks of Grimheart. And since it was a tap version of her E skill, you only have to wait another four seconds until you use the hold version of her E skill. And with some proper pyro placement, it's very possible that we can melt every single one of those hits. So this is potentially very, very strong burst damage, even if the substat is not crit or attack percent. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys for Eula. I am super excited for her. If you're excited for her, leave a comment down below. And thank you guys all so much for watching, especially if you made it this far in the video, then I thank you especially. Alright guys, until next time, I will see you guys later.